Good morning, everyone. It's Brenda Quintana, and I'm sorry I'm a little bit late today. I did not feel all too well last night, and I went to bed early, and then I had a whole bunch of things to do to prep for this wonderful tutorial that I'm going to show you today. I know you're going to want to make this project because I love fun cards, and here it is. Um, I'll I'll show you in a minute how to release the candy, but um, there are cupcakes stamped behind this uh, cloche uh, shaker dome, and there's a cool little release mechanism um, on the back that allows you to get candy in and candy out without destroying the card, which is always a huge bonus. And I'm gonna show you how to make it, it's so cute. Anyway, um, you might notice, if you know me, I caught my hair cut. Yes, I had someone, um, uh, uh, someone that I met um, through someone else, and they came to my front porch, and I finally got a haircut. So, um, Mom, if you're watching this, she said she was going to watch it because she wants to see my new hair, and she said, make sure you show me the back too. So I'm going to turn, 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 turn. Hopefully, I'm still on camera. And there is my haircut. I got it cut to shoulder length. It feels so, so good. I just love it. Anyway, I was so pleased that someone could come to my front porch and cut my hair because I am still not ready to go out into the wilds of the world. Yeah, I sometimes I do go out um, with a mask and stuff. I just do not want to go to a hair cutting salon yet so um, I'm glad I found someone that could cut my hair for me and she was wonderful so very pleased with that so anyway um, if you know me if you know my um, tutorials at all on Friday I always do either a 3d um, project or a fancy full card and then on Saturday I send you out a project sheet and this is going to be great I think you're going to really need this project sheet for this um, card it's not let me put it to you this way if you follow the instructions exactly it's not really a hard card but there's multiple pieces to it so um it it works really well if you follow the instructions and last night i even forgot one of the steps that i was supposed to do so i'm going to be super careful to follow my instructions um, it just helps when you're stamping certain elements that you need to do them before you put this close shaker dome in because you'll need that hole in order to line up everything um, on the, the back pieces. So um, just remember, don't attach this to any piece until your all the other pieces are prepped. Um, that's probably the biggest takeaway from this card is just don't attach this because once you attach it, you know, then you're kind of you're stuck. So I am so excited to show you this card today and um, I'm going to pop over to my other camera. Let's see. It's right here. Okay. And there's my project sheet and I still have to update it with a few things. I was racing to get it done this morning because... I was so late and this one really you know you really need to follow the instructions with all right let me pop this over here for a moment let's talk about some of the things you're going to need if you want to make this card i'm using the sweets and treats stamp set um, and i'm using the cloche dies now these are not a bundle there is actually a bundle let me grab the other piece I'm like probably drawing a blank right now. I don't see it. Where did I stick it? I probably put it somewhere. Sorry. There is a die. Oh, there it is. I brought it out. Classic cloche. Um, this is actually a bundle, but I'm not using the stamp set of this bundle. But if you are interested in the whole cloche concept you might want to get the bundle and the sweets and treats stamp set on the side um, this die right here is the only one um, that matches um, in here but it is very it's crucial to the card so you will need that die um, but you can buy the die separately if you want but if you want you can also buy the classic cloche bundle 
All right, just an aside, maybe you wanna make a Christmas card with treats inside it too, which is like another um, possibility. Okay, and then the other thing you're gonna need is these handy dandy cloche shaker domes, okay? Because that's what's on the front of this card that fits into that hole that allows this whole uh, candy thing to happen, okay? So, just know those things. So let's start by getting our pieces ready. So I've got a piece of pool party. This is going to be my card base. And this piece measures 11 inches by four and a quarter inches. And I've already scored it in half at the five and a half inch mark. You can either do this on your trimmer or the simply scored. But um, so on the 11 inch side, score at the five and a half inch mark. I'm not going to fold this piece yet. Um, then you're going to also need a piece of basic white cardstock. And what I did for this piece is I just want this piece to fit right below this line. So I actually cut this piece to five and seven sixteenths uh, by four and a quarter. Five and seven sixteenths is just one little tick mark below five and a half inches. So just make it a little skinnier than five and a half inches on one side and then four and a quarter than the other. That way um, it's not going to interfere because this is gonna be on the back side of your card front. All right, so then we're gonna bring in our stamp and cut and emboss machine. Oh, you know what, before we do that, you can kind of just do this centered, but let's um, make some pencil lines so that we know exactly where to place everything if you want your card to look identical to mine. Um, you could also, if you were, um, it also works pretty well if you just center your die right there. If you're good at eyeballing, you can center it from side to side and top to bottom, and that will also work out fine. But if you want to be precise, I'm going to make a mark one and a half inches up from the bottom. And I'm just gonna draw a line here. Let's just do that one and a half inches. Make sure it's straight. So that's where the die is gonna rest on that line there. And then we're also going to make a mark um, about two and one eighths inches over. So this is the center point of the card. If you have a centering ruler, you can just go two and one eighths, two and one eighths, and make a centering mark right there. So you know the center from side to side. And then we'll just make a little line coming down here. And now, I'll know where to center my die on in a second. All right, so let me grab my die and the stamping cut and emboss machine. All right, let me show you how all of this lines up. Um, I've got my base plate number one, my thin die adapter number two, I've got a cutting plate, which is number three. Always put your flattest plate on the bottom. And then I'm going to line this up right here. Um, so I'm just lining up my white piece right on top of one of the sides, okay? And then just make sure that's lined up. And now we're gonna take this cloche die and we have this pencil mark on the bottom that's one and a half inches up from the bottom. And then we've got the centering mark. So the nice thing about that centering mark, it's gonna go right down that top part um, of, the, of the handle of the cloche. It's gonna go right down that neck piece so you know that you're going to be um, perfect in that way. So we wanna cut both of these pieces right at the same time, because that way we'll know that they're gonna be aligned perfectly, okay? All right, I'm gonna put my second plate up top here. 
And I'm going to roll this through. Okay. Whoa. All right. So you can discard these cloche pieces. We don't need those. But what we do need is we need these two pieces with a negative of the cloche. All right, we are done the die cutting. That's all we need to do. All right, so now we can fold the card base along the score line. Okay. I want to follow along the way that I had it. We're going to um, leave this piece aside for a second. We're just going to decorate the card front first and get that out of the way. So I'm gonna take a piece of this piece. Okay, a nice contrast to the pool party. Six by six designer series paper pack. I just used a tiny strip of a tablecloth or a countertop. And we're just gonna add that right to the bottom like that. And then we're going to use Coastal Cabana. And this little happy birthday stamp that comes with the set. And just make sure it's inky enough. Right about there. Okay. And then we're going to attach this up top here. about a quarter of an inch from the top. Okay. All right, and then um, we're gonna create a cake stand. And I'm just using um, the cake stand stamp and then I'm using Costa Cabana again. And I'm going to stamp on pool party. All right, and then you need to cut this piece out. There's no die for it, but it's fairly easy to cut out. It's a very smooth, easy shape. And I did that a little earlier. I'm going to wait to attach the cake stand until I've got my close shaker dome in here. And I'm just going to wait and attach that at the end just so I don't make any mistakes. So I'll lay that down here for now. I'm also going to grab Whoop, where'd it go? I have a little bow that I tied with a crinkled seam binding and I'll just take a mini glue dot. Usually do all of this stuff at the end, but I'm wa I wanna do this now when the card is flat and doesn't have that dome on it. <laughs> so I just wanna take care of most of the things on the front first. And I'll just add that little um, bow on there just to, you know, add a little pizzazz to the card. All right. So now we're going to work on the inside piece. So we need this piece. We'll stick the card front aside for now. And we're going to take a piece of cardstock. And this again is just the regular weight, basic weight, not the thick one. And this is what I'm going to call the slider sleeve. Okay, this is where our little slider is going to go in the back. And this piece measures four and a quarter inches across by four and a half inches um, long. So, okay, and then on one of the four and a quarter inch sides, we're going to take um, a three and a quarter inch punch. My project sheet keeps moving. Okay, this is a four and a quarter inch side. We're going to take the three um, quarter inch circle punch and we're going to reach in as far as we can go. Uh, about right there. Okay, so make sure it's centered from side to side. And because the two dimensions, this is four and a half inches and this is four and a quarter, just make sure you don't get those two sides mixed up because you do need to stamp this in on a four and a quarter inch side. Okay, 
and then just go ahead and punch that little hole right there. Okay, this is actually the hole where the candy's gonna come out. So then we need tear and tape, and you know what? This morning everything has has like just disappeared. I'm gonna have to grab some new tear and tape. My tear and tape just disappeared yesterday. Oh, I see it. There it is. Oh my gosh. Okay, before I open up an, an extra one, I hate opening up something when I can't uh, find it. Okay, tear and tape is sticky on both sides. This is the side I punched in, so no tear and tape on this side, but tear and tape will go on the all three of the other sides. So just run a line of tear and tape here run a line of tear and tape here and one here all right then this penciled side this one let's just double check this one is going to be the the side that's going to be facing um, inwards, okay? So it's going to be lined up like this. Just in case you got a little off, a little crooked, you just wanna make sure that that lines up perfectly again. So this side is going to be the up side. So I'm gonna flip it over to the back side now. And then this piece is going to attach right here so you're going to see a hole go right through to your countertop um, and this is what it's going to look like on the back okay so you want to attach this to the top not the bottom there's going to be about three quarters of an inch on the bottom that's not going to have anything on it right now okay so let's remove the liner And this is gonna create a little slider pocket that the slider is gonna go in. So now just take a little time lining this up to make sure it's straight. Okay, and then line that up. Now this is the one thing I forgot to do with my other card, is um, you can stamp um, a little um, greeting on here. And I'm just gonna use some basic gray ink oh shoot I got a little ink no I didn't that's just eraser stuff if I actually got ink on this part it wouldn't matter because um, this is the only thing that you're going to see from the front of the card all right so this is a greeting that comes with a stamp set and it's called a tasty treat for someone sweet and I'm just gonna stamp that right here when the candy um, when you pull out the tab the candy's going to come out of this hole here and when the tab is not in place you're going to be able to see this little greeting here otherwise when you put the tab back you're going to see cupcakes but this is going to be right down here at the bottom okay all right so next thing we need to do is make sure i did all of the things that I was supposed to do for that step. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create the pull piece, okay? So this piece measures three and a quarter inches by four and three quarter inches. And we're gonna do one thing before we do any other stamping on here. I'm gonna just take my scoring. Um, I simply scored, you could also use your trimmer. I'm going to place the four and three quarter inch side up at the top and then I'm going to score at the four inch mark. Okay, in a minute you'll understand why this is so important and it just makes everyone's life easier. So four and three quarter inches um, is the length of this piece and you're going to score at the four inch mark. And it's three and a quarter inches wide. All right, then detail trio punch and we're going to punch all four corners 
up with the this punch. It's easier if you use this punch standing up. Make sure you're all the way into the corner before you punch. All right. So now, following along on my instructions, making sure that um, I am doing everything correctly. So now we're gonna slide this piece in from the back. This is why we've got a little bit of a gap here. So we don't have to fumble with two pieces that are um, perfectly lined up. So we're gonna slide this piece in and a couple of things you wanna make sure, um, you, can, you can kind of bend this up a little bit along the score line. So this score line right here is going to line up with this opening right here. And then you're just gonna make sure that this piece is centered from side to side. There's a little bit of room for give on either side. Flip this back over. And now we're gonna take a pencil and just, oops, trace kind of this shape onto here. Okay. And now we're gonna pull out this pull tab. And now we have this shape and that's going to, let's hold that up a little bit closer to the camera. Okay, so that's going to be your guide on where to stamp your cupcakes. So I'm gonna grab my basic gray again, ink up my first cupcake, and I'm just gonna stamp it right along that pencil line, really close to the side and this one right along the pencil line. Let me see if I can see the side, there it is. Okay. So you could just stamp one cupcake, but I'm gonna do all three. All right, so it's like a nice little stack of cupcakes because why only have one cupcake when you can have three, right? Okay, so let's color the cupcakes. So I'm going to use Daffodil Delight and I'm going to make kind of the yellow part of the cake here, right there. And then I'm going to use my Crumb Cake Dark and I'm just going to brush along these lines and it's not going to be 100% perfect because I kind of want it to have some light spots. I will come along the bottom and do the bottom though. So I'll just brush along these lines here. And that allows me to have like some light spots without thinking about it too much. You can use whatever coloring medium you like for this. Okay. All right. And then we're gonna use polished pink, I believe is the color, light polished pink for the icing. I have trouble using, uh, making something that's blue icing. I think I'm gonna use the, the other tip. Yeah, that's better. This is the bullet tip. It's just a little easier to get the swirl in. And I'm leaving a little bit of white at the bottom. And I'm coming back in and doing a little dark, a little darker on the bottom. Okay. And you know, you could use three different colors of icing too, or you can go really bold and bright on your icing if you wanna match the M&Ms. It's really whatever makes you happy. I kind of just went really neutral and pastels. My M&M's card, the M&M's in the card are like really bright. So you could, you can find other assortments of M&M's or you could use Skittles or you could use Reese's Pieces. There's other candy that will fit in there. Then you just wanna come in and like erase this pencil line just in case it's gonna show through a little bit of the shadow. Just make sure it's gone. Okay, 
Also, um, with the pencil line, um, because you're pulling this out, everyone's going to be able to see this entire tag when it gets pulled out, so you don't want that pencil line there in any case. All right, we've got our piece. And let's just test it out and see how it looks once it's nested on the inside. See, it lines up right here with this, um, fold that score line a bit. Make sure it's centered. There. So now that's what you're gonna see um, once you pull the candy out that will be in the um, back. And after you've dispensed the candy, you'll just be able to put that pull tab back and you'll still have a really nice card to look at. Um, so then one little thing that I did create, I created a little separate PDF and um, it's actually, let me grab part of my sheet that's cut up. So I just, it's gonna come out with the project sheet tomorrow. It just says, um, pull down to release candy, um, just so people know what to do. Cause if you're not there when they receive their card, they might not know how to open the candy and they might tear the card apart to try and get at the candy. But if you put this um, little, cut, cut one of these out, and I just used a sponge dauber to, um, make it yellow so it's kind of like a highlighted um, piece but you don't have to do that or or print it out on colored cardstock or colored paper and then you can just attach it here Let me grab some stamp and seal okay I need to put some on this end too And just make sure you don't put it upside down and then you're just going to add that right there and that way later on they'll know that they need to pull that down all right let me just double check to make sure i have done everything that i need to do before adding the close shaker dome that's why i ask you know you don't put it in there until the very very end and um, so this has to be done in the correct order. So we're gonna start, here's the close shaker dome. This is the top that sticks out and there's adhesive on both sides, which is great, okay? So we're gonna take the top adhesive liner off first, okay? And we'll open up this card base and we're going to just push this down on here Okay. and then seal around it and we'll have our cake stand here right away so we can glue that on so I don't lose this piece I want I wanted to make sure I could put my stand right up against the uh, the shaker dome when I was doing this so that's why I didn't want to attach it because I you're there's a little bit of um, an angle up on this close shaker dome so I just want to attach it right down below and you'll notice that the stand sits a little bit on this um, piece of designer series paper and that kind of makes it look like it's sitting um, on the center of a table or a countertop so that's kind of um, what I like about this now it looks pretty plain right so let's fix that we're gonna come into the inside and you know what? I'm gonna pull this piece out for just a second. We're going to take the back piece off and then we're going to put Tombow all around here. So we're just gonna adhere this piece afterwards, but we just wanna make sure we've got adhesive around the dome, okay? All right, so this is important. You want this opening, uh, this little piece that says a tasty treat for someone sweet, you want this big opening to be face down and just the little circle with um, this pull tab area, this is, is going to be like this. Okay, so it's gonna be facing up. So now you're just going to line this up 
with the piece. Okay. And then press down. Okay. And so this is what it's going to look like when um, you've pulled out the candy and you haven't put the tag in yet. So you'll, you can see it says a tasty treat for someone sweet. Well, let's put the tag in for just a moment and I'll show you what it looks like before we put the candy on the inside. Again, you just wanna make sure this is lined up because there is a little bit of a play um, on the side to side. Um, this is not going to fall out. My son, when I showed it to him um, yesterday or this morning, said, is that going to fall out? Is that candy going to... No, this this is stuck in there. It's very snug, so it's not going to fall out unless you actually pull it. And that's, that's the nice thing about having that little um, note there. Or... You know, if you don't want to print that out, hand write, pull down to release candy right there, if, if you want, or just say pull down, um, just so people know that that's what they're supposed to do. All right, so this is now the front of the card. And so it looks pretty cute, just like that. Um, and then we're gonna add the candy. So we're just gonna open this up. I'm gonna grab my little glove. Um, okay, and I'm just going to take some M&Ms and pop them in here. Come on, little guys. That one's a deformed one. Okay, and just keep adding M&Ms. Have a look. You just, you want to make sure it's pretty full. Maybe one or two more. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay. And then you're just gonna slide this piece in so you can see how this would, um, you know, that's gonna be the release hole. You just make sure the cupcakes are facing down and then slide that up. And there is your card with M&Ms in it now. <laughs> I don't want to take the M&Ms in to show you the both um, uh, both things, but um, on my project sheet there is um, the what it looks like in the um, once it's the candy has been pulled out, so you can see um, both sides. Isn't that fun? And you know what, you could do that, you know, you've, we've got the classic cloche here, right? So let's think about this. We could do something like this um, uh, as a Christmas scene, right? We could do a little Christmas card. You know, when they have the Christmas M&Ms out, they have red, green, and white M&Ms. So do a, a, a classic Christmas colored theme card, put the red, white, and green M&Ms in here. And then um, back here, you can create a little scene, um, a little Christmas scene instead of a happy birthday theme. But I don't know about you, but right now I'm not quite in the Christmas mode yet and I wanted to show you how to use this um, to create a fun birthday card because, you know, we're always looking for neat ways to have like kind of a fun um, birthday card. Now, if you send this in the mail, you will have to send it probably in a padded envelope. So. Um, and keep in mind, also this time of year, a lot of places are experiencing heat waves. So not really the best time to be sending a card like this in the mail. I would wait until uh, fall birthdays um, for these types of cards. But if you're handing them in person and you're going to be in an air conditioned environment, then it will be absolutely fine. Sending them in the mail, you're taking a little bit of a chance right now um, with candy. You don't want anything. Even though there's a candy shell, it might melt a little bit. So um, just keep that in mind for your candy sending. All right, I hope you guys liked that a lot because I had a lot of fun creating it. I, I was just totally stoked yesterday when, I, when all the little pieces came together. Um, so a couple of things I want to tell you about. It's celebration right now. 
So if you want to get some of these supplies right now, it's a great time because Stampin' Up! will reward you for every 50 or $100 you spend, you are going to get to choose a celebration product. And there's a lot of cool things. We've got paper, we've got stamp sets, we've got dies. They're all in the celebration brochure or if you're I'm going to update my blog in just a second with a banner up top that will take you right to the celebration page where you're going to see all your celebration choices. And it's for every $50 or $100 you spend. So if you spend $150, you can get three $50 selections or um, a $100 selection and a $50 selection. So it's nice. It's not just like one per order. If your order qualifies you for more, you can get more. So I love that. Also, if you spend at least $50 with me, you're going to get a package of, um, for the month of August, you're going to get a package of, let me grab them, why is nothing ever in my arm's reach, um, a package of these cute stars adhesive back sequins, and these are going to be perfect for your fall projects. If you like Halloween, they'll be great for Halloween, but they will also be great for Christmas um, and just in general, oh, who doesn't like sparkly stars? So um, those will be going out in September if you order at least $50 with me in August. Um, and then if you um, uh, place at least a $15 order with me, you'll get to choose one of my free with purchase tutorials. They I have about 80 tutorials to choose from quite a lot. Um, all right, I'm going to get down to see if there's any questions and um, see if there's anything that I can answer for you this morning. Good morning, Fair Blue from Tennessee and Birgit from Germany. Oh, and Heidi's from Australia. It's midnight there wow that's crazy yeah we're almost on opposite sides of the earth um yeah it's quite crazy when you travel from australia to here or here to australia you really mess up your your times but thank you for joining me this morning good morning janine good morning phyllis good morning linda and kristen kristen says she loves m m's um if she makes this card, she has to remember not to eat them all while crafting. You know what? The good thing about this card, Kristen, is that you can make the cards, that like make a bunch of them, and then buy the M&Ms and fill them right away, and then you know how many you have left over so you don't eat all of them. But like make the cards first. I sometimes make that mistake. I'll go to the store and I'll see some candy and I'll be like, oh, that's so cool. I've never maybe had that candy before and I'll have to try it. And then, you know, there's no candy around by the time I make the project. So um, I was lucky I had some M&Ms left over from, I don't know when I had these M&Ms left over from, but um, I I just added them to the card and they're, they're awesome. They're awesome. Okay, let's see. There's any other questions? Oh, and I have someone from India, and you were here the other time, and I always um, say your name wrong. Surya Teja, welcome. All right, Birgit asks how my son is doing. He's doing great. He got here last Sunday, and we're so excited to have him here. He's gonna be here for two weeks, and on the 24th, um, we're gonna do a live together. We're gonna do Casing Tuesday together. We've done a few of them in the past, um, but he's gonna join me on my Tuesday. And I, oh my gosh, he's in exams right now. Otherwise, um, he, he came home to do his last few final exams for the term. Um, our son is in a kind of a different sort of program than, than most kids are. He's in co-op, um, a co-op program for engineering, and um, he alternates school terms, four-month school terms with four-month work terms. So in um, from January to April, he was on work term, and from May to August, he's been on school term, and then in September, he's going back to a work term. So he's 
he's going to be a little bit different than all of the kids that graduated the same year of high school. His program's actually five years, so he's going to be uh, uh, doing in school for longer than some of his friends. But in the end, I think it's going to work out really well. Um, he's already building a, a resume um, from all the work term. So when he's done, he'll probably have a job. So that's uh, always a, a wonderful thing. Um, a lot of those companies um, that hire you during co-op, um, some of them just give you a job offer um, at the end when you're done your degree and they, they want you to come back. So usually you do have a job offer. So it's, it's awesome. And, um, but it's really, really hard work. My son is smart, but he has to work really, really hard. And um, I, I'm just so thankful that he's willing to do, to put that work in because it is not an easy degree. Um, I don't know if I could have done it. I don't have the math skills for that. Um, I love designing, but the math skills that you need for engineering are incredible, just incredible. All right, let's see. Oh, it's nine o'clock at night in India. Well, that's not as bad as, as Australia right now, but yes, that would almost be bedtime for me. There is a reason why I do these tutorials in the day because I am not a night person and even an afternoon person, I just fade. Like I don't, I have energy in the morning and I don't have it in the afternoon at night. So that's why I try to do them in the morning because I have more energy in the morning. I'm just a morning person in general. Um, so kudos to anyone who can stay up late because I cannot do that. Um, let's see. All right. Well, thank you. I'm so glad you love um, my videos, especially the Hershey's Christmas tree. Yes, that was one of the... I think one of the coolest things I ever designed because it kind of was a springboard for so many of my other um, tutorials in the future. So thank you so much for joining me today. I will be live on Facebook at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Tuesday um, and then back here on YouTube next Friday. Um, if you love my videos, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Um, that way you'll get notifications um, when I go live. Um, make sure you hit that little bell as well to, um, uh, so that you can say how often you want to be notified uh, from my channel. And thank you so much. I, I really appreciate each one of you, um, whether you're a customer, whether you're on my team, whether you're just a follower. Um, you just really help me out just by um, watching my video and sharing my video. And I, I just really appreciate that. All right, guys, I hope you have a fabulous weekend and I will see you guys all next week. Take care. Bye bye.